And we are admitting all. As soon as I hit this, Jeff, I'm going to leave it to you to continue admitting people. Hi, everybody. Oh, my goodness. Thank you guys all for joining us today. <laughs> Welcome to the grand experiment. Hello. <laughs> Sorry, we're just trying to keep track of everything as we get going because we're working with a crew of us. <laughs> and Jeff, Jeff Papona, who you may have met at Looking Glass, is also here um, to hopefully keep tabs on the chat and uh, answer any questions that might pop up while we're going through stuff. But we're just really excited to have you join us. And I'm extra excited. To, to get to tell you a little bit about about Michael Kawano and how much I adore him for <laughs> for in a lot of ways being um, our savior uh, since the whole pandemic began. No, seriously, I, I I just need to tell you guys when we had to get shut down at the very beginning, Michael was one of the first people to immediately reach out and ask how he could help. And within a couple of weeks, we were running online classes, and that's because of this guy. Um, anyway. I love him. I'm super happy to have him here with us. And uh, and he's a gear hound. He knows yeah. all this stuff, and that's why he's a teacher. <laughs> um, I actually, because sure. we're going to be talking about <laughs> shopping this holiday season, especially like what you can get from Looking Glass, what's available, what's cool. Um, but I'm really curious about, do you remember your first camera? Oh, yeah. I remember my first camera, and I also remember my first Bizarre. So my first camera was a tiny little 110 film camera when I was a kid. Um, and I loved that thing. I would take it everywhere. I would take, you know, tons of pictures or anytime I could afford, afford film anyway, I would, uh, I would take pictures. So I loved that camera. That was, gosh, I don't even know how young I was. I must have been eight or nine years old. So was um, it a gift? Yeah, I think it was a hand-me-down. So a it was a it was a gift, but yeah, <laughs> it was because I showed some interest, I guess. I don't even totally remember all the specifics. My first DSLR, though, I do remember. Um, I've always enjoyed photography. I've, I've always, you know, kind of been the one with the point and shoot. Uh, but gosh, probably maybe 13 or 14 years ago, I decided it was time to, eh, maybe, yeah, about that time, I get a real camera again. <laughs> so I, uh, I actually picked up a Nikon D90. That was my first uh, digital camera. I see somebody in the audience right now. A man named Ron, who also shot the D90 for an amazingly long amount of time. I think that still might have been your favorite camera, Dad. I, I love <laughs> that camera. It's a it's a really great camera, and and that I guess kind of sparked me and kind of got me going. And gosh, fast forward three years, and I was doing photography for, uh, professionally. There you so. go. <laughs> I guess that's kind of my point, though. I remember my first camera, and I know what it led to. Mm -hmm. Um, so giving somebody a camera, even if it's just a little thing, dad, you gave me my first camera <laughs> and the guy at the shop told you it was idiot proof. And you decided to tell me <laughs> that too. Thank you for that, by the way, but it did also spark something in me. And I, I have never stopped taking pictures and it's yeah. such a huge part of my life. So we're going to talk to you today about how you can kind of either gift photography to someone else or for yourself. Okay. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Uh, Michael, do you want to kick us off with a little bit of, uh, and we're going to do an overview of camera features, things that you should probably consider when you're going to be making a purchase. And then I'm going to let you know what's actually available right now. <laughs> sounds good. Let me, uh, I'm going to jump into the presentation here. Uh, hopefully you'll all be able to see. Share screen. <clears throat> Okay, so I have uh, not going right. Jeff, can you see? Oops, is it not working? I think that's it. It's not quite full. Screen. Oh, it's not full screen, screen is, is it? Uh -uh. Let's get out. Sorry, we'll try one again. Moment, we're gonna try one more time. It's like it worked when we tested it. Yeah, as it this. always I think, does. <laughs> I think I know what happened. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. <clears throat> Yes. Did it work now? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. 
And then Jeff, I can still see you out there. Can you give me a thumbs up if it looks good on your end? Or dad? Yep, yes, perfect. perfect. All right, let's go ahead and keep on moving. So like Jen said, we're gonna talk about a number of things that are important, or at least I feel are, are important considerations when you're buying gear. Uh, these are the things we're gonna go through tonight uh, as quickly as we can, so we can stay within time. <laughs> so we'll start off with important camera features to consider. Jen will go over camera recommendations at some various points. Uh, we'll spend some time talking about camera bags, tripods, prints, albums, and then we'll end by talking briefly about used gear and new gear. And there should be some time at the end also for just open questions. So to start off, oops. It's just not going. There we go. Camera features to consider. So the first thing we want to talk about is, is resolution. Um, and the reason I want to start here is because often when you are seeing or reading about uh, cameras or seeing reviews on cameras, they'll start uh, the marketing efforts often start with the resolution. So you you'll hear things like 24 megapixel camera or 45 megapixel camera. Um, and sometimes people don't really know. Uh, what that means or how important it is. So we wanted to talk through that. It is something you want to consider. Why is this not moving? Uh, here we go. So most modern cameras are gonna have resolutions anywhere from about 16 megapixels to 24 megapixels. Uh, there are cameras and more and more are coming out that go much higher than that. So 50 megapixels, 60 megapixels. Uh, Fuji has the 100 megapixel camera. Yes. So it's, it's kind of getting wild and the megapixel wars they kind of took off for a while and then it died down, but now it looks like it's ramping back up. So technology continues to move, but the big question that we often get, and, and probably the most important one to ask yourself is how much resolution do you actually need? Uh, and the answer really depends on the type of photography you're doing. <clears throat> so if you regularly find yourself printing images very large, you know, poster size images that you're going to view very close as well. Um, or if for whatever reason you have the need to crop substantially on a regular basis. So I don't know, you take pictures of wildlife that you can't get close to and you don't have a long telephoto lens. So you have to crop in to get you know that nice shot of the, uh, of the animal. Perhaps then you might need to get a lot of megapixels. Uh, for the printing side, if you're viewing something very close and it's a very large print, you do need a high megapixel count. But on the flip side, if you're either not printing large or if you're not gonna be very close to the images, like let's say a billboard. Billboards we often see, they're, we all know they're huge. Um, and we wonder how many megapixels it would take to print a billboard. The reality is it probably takes about 10, maybe even seven megapixels to print a billboard. And the reason is billboards are printed at such low resolution. They're you know seven dots per inch that uh, if you were up close to it, they would look like dots. They wouldn't look like a smooth line, but from 400, 500 feet away, they look perfect. So don't worry too much about megapixels, I guess is my point, unless you have very specific needs. Uh, another thing with that, so for digital sharing, normal print sizes, you know, anything up to about an eight by 10, you don't really need a high resolution camera. Can you benefit from it? Possibly, it really depends on the type of photography you're doing, but I wouldn't spend too much time and effort worrying about your resolution. Because the truth is the majority of cameras at this point are gonna suit most people's needs more than sufficiently. Yep. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, so, and we'll talk about things that are probably gonna make a bigger difference to your overall using experience with a camera. But the reason, again, we started with resolution is because you'll almost always hear the lead in on the marketing end being, this amount of megapixels. So just you know, take it with a grain of salt. Everybody likes to count numbers. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. That's true. Well, and it is something that you know you can do a quick comparison between cameras, but is it really important? Uh, so the next thing we want to talk about is low lightability and performance, and this is important to at least myself and most photographers. How well a camera can perform in lower lighting conditions, and it doesn't mean you're shooting pictures by candlelight. Um, oftentimes we think of low light in terms of what our eyes think of as low light, but for a camera, low light can simply be shooting indoors versus outdoors on a cloudless day. 
So the better your camera is able to perform in low light, the better able you are to get the pictures that you want in conditions when the lighting drops down. So in order for a camera to capture images properly in a lower lighting situation, it uses something called ISO. Um, and ISO is simply a sensitivity setting on your imaging sensor so that you can increase or decrease the sensor's sensitivity to light. Um, and what that does is it allows you to use your higher shutter speeds in darker environments and still get you know, nice sharp images. So it does vary quite a bit. But cameras that allow for the higher ISO settings let you take those pictures a bit easier. Um, the downside is cameras that go up to those very high ISOs often have more image deg degradation when you get to those higher ISOs. Um, and by image degradation, if, if anyone shot in the old film days, you, you remember the graininess that you sometimes get with the very fast films. It's basically the same thing. You get a, a perceived loss of sharpness because you have this graininess or what is called digital noise. Uh, you can also sometimes get color casting or maybe colors that aren't rendered quite as accurately. Um, so it's not something that is ideal for you know, most of what we're after. And so that's why the ISO performance of the camera is really the important part of ISO. <clears throat> Some cameras perform better than others at equivalent ISO levels, and that's an important thing to remember as well. Just because a camera might go to an ISO of 24,000 doesn't mean that it performs well there. <laughs> does not mean it looks good. It means that you can do it if right. you have to, and that's why it's there. Um, I don't know if you've got this in the slides or not too, but usually, typically, when we're talking about cameras that are designed to do really well at high ISOs, typically also have lower resolutions. Mm. It's just something to keep in mind because those are the two competing factors. And a couple of cameras have managed to really kind of boost that resolution and high ISO performance fairly well so that you can get both of them in one, but they're few and far between. Mm -hmm. um, and they do get really expensive, um, which isn't always, you know, a problem for everyone, but it is something to consider <laughs> for many of us. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just as a quick visual example of what we're talking about here, the photo on the left was shot at a very low ISO. You see a very clean image, none of the image degradation that we see in the photo on the right. On uh, the photo on the right, you see that graininess, you see that color casting, um, especially in the darker tones. In shadows or darker tones, that's typically where you're going to see that noise show up first. Um, so as you are comparing cameras, it's good to know how this uh, performance uh, is for them at the various ISO levels. But another workaround, another way around this, is image stabilization. So instead of having to increase that ISO, a camera that has very good image stabilization or a lens that has built-in image stabilization uh, can also help you because it lets you shoot at lower shutter speeds and get more light to the sensor without having to move that ISO up. So this is a technology that's come a long way over the years. Um, and especially recently, you can, uh, you can find cameras nowadays that can really allow you to shoot at very slow shutter speeds, still get a sharp image, not having to worry about you as a person moving as you're holding your camera, causing the image shake, causing you to have blurry images. I'm gonna quickly jump yeah, in please. for a second when it comes to image stabilization. So the thing to always remember about image stabilization is your subject can't be moving. <laughs> Yep. Always keep that in mind. So if you need to do any sort of still life shooting, it's fantastic. I have personally handheld certain cameras three seconds or longer and gotten a perfectly sharp image in virtually no light. So that that in body image stabilization, you'll also hear it called IBIS mm -hmm. um, is just something to think about. And it is in the majority of mirrorless cameras at this point. So mm -hmm. mirrorless seems to be the technology where our entire industry is headed. And that's where they're introducing stuff like this. Um, and so definitely look for in body image stabilization if you're going to be buying a, a camera this holiday. Yep, I completely agree. Uh, the next thing we want to quickly talk about is frame rate, and that simply is the number of images that a uh, camera can take in a second. So the majority of consumer level, level cameras are going to take anywhere between three and five uh, frames per second, uh, but some models can go quite a bit faster than that, 14 frames a second, 20 frames a second. Um, 
some of the the more specific sports cameras can go quite a bit higher than that even. So it's something that you may or may not need. If you're simply doing a landscape uh, photo, you probably don't need to shoot many frames a second um, in most cases. Um, but if you're doing sports photography, wildlife photography, children running and running around, um, it, it's useful to be able to take multiple frames so you can get that peak moment of action or that uh, moment where you know the smile is perfect or the the persons aren't the people aren't blinking. Uh, let's see. I think I just said that. Sweet. Another quick thing to talk through is autofocus, and autofocus is important for us because. If our photos aren't focused, or I'm sorry, if our cameras aren't focused on our subject, then it can quickly make for an image that's unusable. If I'm trying to take a picture of Jen here, but the camera focuses on the background, I'm probably not going to enjoy that picture, and neither is she. <laughs> so autofocus is important, and that's an, this is another area of technology where it, it, technology is moving quite quickly. So cameras are getting better and better autofocus systems. Generally crazy speaking, day. yeah, really, I mean, where crazy, it kind of follows your day. subject and is very sticky is what we call the autofocus systems. Um, but it really can greatly increase your chances of coming away with quality images. Uh, things to consider with autofocus, number of focus points. So the more focus points your camera has, generally the better the autofocus system is going to work for you. Placement and coverage is also important. So if there are many focus points but they're all in the very center of the image area you don't have as much flexibility if let's say your subject wanders out of the center uh, of your image area or if you're trying to compose your image so that your subject is off to one side or the other so that is important as well whoops Whoa. sorry about that <laughs> So it happens uh, when we're running two computers side yeah. by side. Uh, type of focus points is also important. Uh, I won't get too technical here, but some focus points are more capable than other focus points. So you're looking for uh, focus points called cross type. Um, and those are going to be able to uh, perform better, especially in lower lighting situations, uh, which brings me to ability to focus in a lower light. Some cameras don't have a very good ability to, to use their autofocus system well when the lighting starts to dim. Others perform very well even in very dark environments. Just for a quick visual, this is what we're talking about with number of focus points, placement and coverage of these focus points. So the more you have, the wider the placement, the better off you're going to be. A couple of other just quick hit things to make sure you're thinking about with cameras. Durability and weather sealing. If you're um, protected against water and dust, that can be very useful depending on the type of uh, photography you do. I think it's actually one of the most important features to consider. Um, so whether you need that or not is going to immediately change what you're looking at possibly buying. Yep. Um, because not every camera is weather sealed. And if you plan to go places that experience you know, weather or you do something like go to the beach, or if you have dogs, or if you have kids, yep. um, weather sealing comes in handy and could honestly just save your gear. So yep. um, if you don't need it, then you're gonna save some money. Um, but again, I I live for weather sealing because there's drool and sand on almost everything I own. <laughs> <laughs> yep. uh, battery life is also important. Uh, any camera. Uh, become any digital camera these days becomes a paperweight very quickly if the battery doesn't work. So either strong battery life or at least small batteries so you don't mind carrying several around with you is important. Uh, video features is becoming more and more important in the photography world. So the ability for your camera to take video might be important to you. And then what I feel is one of the most, if not the most important thing of any camera is the ergonomics, how it feels in your hand. Um, and not to put too much of a plug for the store, but it's a big reason to come into a store. Uh, you know, online, you never have an idea of how a camera feels in your hand. Whereas if you're physically in a store, don't underestimate how uh, good or bad a camera can feel and how much it can change your shooting experience if you have good ergonomics and ergonomics that fit you. Because what you like may not be what someone else likes. And it's hard to just read reviews and, and know how the ergonomics are on a camera without putting your hands on it. Yeah, it's uh, 
So this is the only other thing that I actually personally look for in a camera at weather sealing and then how <laughs> it feels because I can figure my way to work anything to my needs if I have to. But if I don't like holding it and I don't like taking it places, then mm -hmm. it's totally useless. And if it can't hold up to my dogs, then yep. there's the other half <laughs> of that equation. So everything else I can always work around. That one's a biggie. Yep. Okay. Um, I think we are. Sweet. Jeff, any questions in the chat room or any questions from anyone out there? Do you want to go ahead and stop sharing? For now? Yeah, go away. Sweet, because then we'll see people. Of not at the moment that any questions from anybody just type in the chat and uh, we'll get right to it i'm gonna grab um, my list because next comes uh the part of the story that um is what most people are probably really wondering about um we're calling it camera recommendations but what it really is is camera availability <laughs> <laughs> um i hope everybody can tell that it's me talking here camera availability is going to be extremely limited <laughs> That's just the way it's continuing. However, most manufacturers have already funneled all of their abilities and pieces and bits, all the stuff that makes something actually end up in our store into at least one product. Um, for holiday this year, there are really just two cameras that I know of that for sure are not going to be a problem for us to restock. That is the Nikon Z5, which is a full frame mirrorless camera in their Z system. It's going to be at a phenomenal price point. So I do highly recommend taking a look at it. Along with, we just started instant savings on Z lenses and the lenses there are lots of right now. So lens availability is really good. The Z5 availability is going to be really good. The other two cameras I want to mention because we do have stock on them right now, the Z6 II, and the, with the 24 to 70 lens is in stock at Looking Glass right now. I don't know how long that's going to last. Um, I do know that Nikon is missing one part to continue building those and the Z7 twos. So what we get is what we get, but it's going to remain thin. Uh, the ZFC is the other one, which is the super cute. <laughs> Have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. So cute. Um, so from Nikon, the ZFC we also have in stock right now. Um, from Olympus, we currently have stock on TG6s. So if you're looking for a point and shoot that's super duper weather durable, like it's called a tough camera for a reason. And they're really cute. They have adapters. So if you want to do, they have an LED adapter and, uh, and some lens adapters if you want to use them, but they can go underwater. They can go anywhere you go. The resolution's great. They can shoot in raw. Mm -hmm. um, you can shoot video. And the macro features are outrageously good. So that's a phenomenal point and shoot um, that does more than most typical point and shoots do. The other camera that we have good stock on right now from Olympus is the EM5 Mark III. This is the prosumer level of a micro four thirds, meaning you can switch lenses on it. So it's an interchangeable lens um, and it is weather sealed. So it's not the, top level, which we do have like one of, but it's like the mid level so that you're first getting into that weather ceiling. Mm -hmm. So it keeps it at a nice kind of medium price point. You want to talk about image stabilization? Uh, the image stabilization is so good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Olympus is the one that I shoot that I have held for, I think it may have actually been an EM5, maybe the right. first one where I shot an image that was the three second exposure of a fountain in like New Orleans. Yeah. And it was <laughs> sweet, it came out so good. Um, anyway, I'm, I think the image stabilization in Olympus is absolutely one of the best, um, especially when you pair it with some of their lenses. You can get up to six and a half stops. Um, if you know what a stop is, it's like the, anyway, we don't have to go into that here. But six and a half stops when you pair it with the right lenses is m a it's mind really, blowing really good. <laughs> um, amount of image stabilization. Um, from Sony, Okay, and those Olympus ones, like I said, we have stock. It seems to be coming. The stock right now is good, but we do not have word from them about what we will be able to restock. Sony, because um, I'm trying to get you know a little bit of everything in here, the A7 III. So we know Sony just introduced the A7 Mark IV. That one's going to be in limited to no supply and hasn't even shipped yet. The A7 III, which is the predecessor and which is a really good all-around camera, 
it does good video it does decent and low light it's kind of good like autofocus. the autofocus is killer um and so it would be comparable even to the z6 II. Mm. so those two are kind of right in line with each other um both are a really great all-around camera and the a7 III is actually in good supply this holiday season so that is the second camera for sure that we know we can get and that we can restock and that we're happy to have because it's a good one. Um, the other one is the RX100 Mark 7. So right now we've got two of these in stock. If you're familiar, are you familiar with the RX100? I actually don't know that one that well. It's a point and shoot. Um, so this is another little guy. It's got mm. a great little zoom lens built into it. And so it's a pocket mm. camera, but it's got, I don't remember what size sensor, but it's a good size <laughs> sensor. <laughs> Maybe Jeff. Jeff will know. Jeff will put into the chat what size sensor the RX100. Yeah, it's a one-inch sensor that was a, uh, and a small form factor, nice size lens, very sharp. My favorite. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um, so that is good. Other stuff is still trickling in, so I don't want to like tell you guys that nothing else is coming um, because stuff still is coming. We are still getting invoices. Product is still coming in. We're still running into supply chain issues, but in general, like if you want to know what you can for sure get, we're looking at the Z5 mm -hmm. and the A7 III, and then whatever we have in the store right now. <laughs> so um, the other thing that I want to go ahead and mention, because Canon did not have a very good list to give me. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, the only camera that they know for sure that is available is the Canon R. Normally I would say something after R because what people are currently buying is the R5, R6, the newly introduced R3. Canon R is the original one. We don't typically stock it stock it because we were stocking all of the newer models, but they have stock on it. So if you want to get it, let me know. I will bring it in for you. But we do have some lenses. Um, in particular, which we haven't had a whole lot of, which a lot of people are looking for, we have two of the RF 100 macros in stock right now. So those are just a few of running through what is available now and or will be available moving forward into the holidays. So always check in and give us a call. And if you ever have questions, just let us know. We're doing everything we can to get as much gear as possible. Certainly, if you have prepaid for anything, we are working hard trying to get that. Um, yes, oh, Jeff is pointing out, yes. We have an R5 that is pre-owned right now. Um, as long as it's still in stock, Jeff, I don't know if you checked the system. It's been in stock for about a day. So. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, what's next on our list? So next we're going to jump over to camera bags. Uh, I'm going to oh. switch over just to the screen. We can talk it through. We don't need the slideshow yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. So there's a number of perfect. Yeah, there's a number of things you want to consider with camera bags. And and to me, we talked about weather sealing. We talked about ergonomics with cameras camera bags is kind of another part of that equation as far as what you want to buy um, because if you uh if you're a photographer i'm sure most or a lot of you probably have the same bagaholic syndrome that uh, jen and i have yep. uh, camera or photographers often have many different bags but it's important to have a bag that you feel good about um, it's important to make sure that you have a bag of the size that you're willing to carry around um, so we have we have a few. So I just pulled, like, we have a nice selection of bags right now. We did just get in a new shipment from Peak Designs, and we've got a uh, more Think Tank on the way also. Um, this, we've got a few of these in stock right now. Tenba, this is this is my current, like, favorite go-to backpack because, okay, first of all, I mean, I'll angle this a little bit so you can kind of see, like, I'm five foot two. My torso <laughs> is short. <laughs> I also carry multiple systems and long lenses, so that means that it's kind of hard for me personally to find a bag that fits that isn't going to hit me in a weird spot when I'm carrying a lot of gear. This one is crazy, crazy little, and because it has a top load and a back load, is extremely lightweight and has the two straps, I can actually fit my two systems that I like to carry with me, along with my 300 millimeter lens, which is for an Olympus, I'm gonna point out, it's very small. Um, but I can fit everything I need into one of these and not actually weigh myself down all day or feel like I'm lugging something that's 
kind of annoying. <laughs> At some point, we always get a little bit like irritated about taking off the bag and putting on the bag. And this is actually a bag that I don't even think about. So I do recommend it. And, one thing uh, while, you, while you have this one out, yeah. uh, while Jen has this bag out, I, I want to point out one, what I think of as more of a security feature that I love with my bags that I take on traveling. And it is this ability to get to your gear from the back. So this is on your back the whole time. If you access your gear through the back of it, that means that while you're wearing it, people that are behind you can't actually access your gear and to me that's really important um most of the bags that I, or most of the backpacks i carry these days i make sure they have that feature so it opens from the backside, so that if i'm traveling and i'm on a train or i'm you know walking through a crowded area i don't have to worry about my gear being taken from the bag while it's on my person um you know depending on where you go depending on how much you travel that can be a really important thing to think about definitely no, it's a huge deal. And so I guess the other things to think about is what kind of gear you've got. So mm. we recommend actually coming into the store because I'm going to do this really quick. And, and I, I swore I wasn't going to do this. And of course, I'm going to do this. Um, we're going to walk around because we're here and we can. We have so many bags right now. And I might got more over here. <laughs> it just kind of keeps going. But every single one of them, like here's some of the tenbas, like, but it, there's a larger version, it's in black. This is actually a sling, so it's a one strap. Um, so we got options and we recommend you actually bring your gear and mm -hmm. try them out to make sure that it actually fits and that you like the way it feels. Mm -hmm. If you're gifting one, just get one that's cool <laughs> that you think they're gonna really like because they'll probably <laughs> use it anyway. Yep because none of us have one bag. <laughs> okay, sorry. There's there's the walking through the store. Do you have a favorite? Oh, um, this is cool too. Oh, that is neat. Made out of ocean plastic. This is actually pack safe. So we have some pack safe bags still left in the store. Um, I don't know if they're readily available, but by and well, we've got them because they do have tons of anti-theft fe features. Mm -hmm. That's great. I didn't even know they made photography bags. Yeah. <laughs> okay, back back to our little standing spot. Do you guys have any questions about bags? We got a bunch. And we can answer lots of questions about bags. And while you're gathering it's questions, Jeff, design, sweet little guy right now. Yeah, so just another, I'm just going to do kind of a quick run through some of the things I consider with bags when I'm looking at them. Um, so size, we talked about accessibility to gear, we talked about uh, comfort. And that's again, where Jen, you know, keep it or come in and try it on because comfort is really important. Sonia, to answer your question, no. There are lots of them that only have back access. So mm. some of them open from the side, some of them swing around, some of them open from the front, and some of them open from the back. And so the back opening feature is something that tends to come across in many of the different brands. Yep. Um, some folks, uh, need to have the ability to carry your laptop. So that's another thing to consider. Does it have the space for a laptop? And if so, for what size? Uh, weatherproofing, that can be important. Again, just like with your camera, you want to make sure that you can keep your gear protected. Ability to attach a tripod or some sort of light stand to the back of it. Some It's important for some photographers to be able to do that. Uh, security features we talked a little bit about. Uh, the two other things that I, I always think about is just the style of it and not necessarily for the cool factor as much as does it look discreet? Does it look like a camera bag? Because more and more thieves are starting to figure out that cameras can be valuable. So if your bag looks like a camera bag, it's, uh, it may get you into trouble, especially you know if you travel to places where uh, crime is a bit higher. So I like my bags to look very discreet. I don't, I don't like them to look like camera bags. And then the last thing, and, and most people won't need this, but if you do have a lot of gear and you do have to carry it with you, bags that have wheels are really important. Uh, when I shoot weddings, the wheeled bag saves my back. I've had non-wheeled big giant backpacks before and they get very heavy. So bags with wheels can really save you from you know back pain later on. Um, and this is one other thing when you're thinking about bags. We have all these accessory packs right now. If you want to make your life much easier, get away to organize your memory cards, your batteries, your extra cords and cables, 
<laughs> and all the extra little accoutrement you might have along with it, like if you have little lights, but mm -hmm. we all have little doodads. Yep. The doodads get lost. Batteries. These are really inexpensive and possibly one of the most handy things that you can have. Plus, if you're a crafter, I know people <laughs> that straight up use them for their tools and supplies for that as well. So it's not just for photography. Um, that can be a bag of many, many uses. Mm -hmm. All right. Bag questions. Are we entertaining? <laughs> we can Are you juggle. hating this? <laughs> Come on, we need some feedback because we don't even know how this is going. <laughs> I see some smiles out yeah. there. I think we're okay. Oh, thank you. All right. I appreciate it. All right. We'll keep going. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. We're going to do tri tripods. Tripods. Sweet. We like tripods. Okay. Can we see? Yay. Yes. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about is tripods. And so if, tripods, as I'm sure most of you know, if you're serious about taking great photos, especially if you often take photos either in low light situations, do landscape photography, macro photos, uh, tripods really are one of those must have accessories. It's an easy way to get your camera stable. It's an easy way to help you make sure that your image quality is as good as possible and uh, make sure that your photos are as sharp as possible. They give you a lot more creative control uh, because you can shoot at really any shutter speed that you'd like in order to render motion the way that you want it to be rendered or gather enough light if you're in a really dark environment. Um, high quality tripod really truly can last you a lifetime. The tripod that I bought, gosh, probably a decade ago or still, I still use is still in great condition. Um, it's one that I'll probably have for the rest of my life. Um, tripods will all always include the legs, a head and or a mounting plate to allow you to mount your camera to. They don't always actually include the head. That's true. Well, so you sometimes buy you can separate. buy legs and a head separately. Mm -hmm. And those are for people who like to get real specific about the head that they've got. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's well, and the or legs. interchange them. Uh, definitely. <laughs> there are different heads really for different uses it's true i mean especially if you do any kind of video work you definitely are going to need a slightly different set of abilities than a photographer's tripod well right. and then if you're doing studio shooting and you're doing tabletop stuff getting yep. those micro adjustments yep. is not easy with a ball head <laughs> so you know you just sort of that's what we're here for so you can come in <laughs> take a look at what we've got and we can let you know why the thing exists always come in and ask our team yep um, anything you want, especially if you want to come in sometime and search the store for something you don't recognize and have no idea what it does, see if you can stump my team. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. We have so many weird little things in here that yep. um, everybody should know about, but you might even surprise one of us. Yeah. No, I, I love wandering the store. There are really fun things here. Uh, so one really important thing with tripods is weight. A very heavy tripod, a very large tripod is probably something you're not likely to carry with you much um, unless you do all of your uh, photos alongside a road so you can just pull it out of the trunk. But if you have to physically carry it with you, if you do any hiking with your tripod, if you are uh, traveling with it, being able to either fold it up small and or make sure it's nice and lightweight is, is super important. Um, weight rating is also important. That's different from how much the tripod weighs. It's how much the tripod can hold, how much gear it can hold stably. Um, if your tripod legs and head aren't weighted for enough weight, if you have heavier gear than it's weighted for, rated for, then you can get some what's called creep, where you set it where you want it, and then it kind of moves a little bit and it frustrates the heck out of you. So just make sure you know how much it can carry. Um, tripod height, maximum height, to make sure that you can look through your viewfinder while you're standing straight up. Because if you have to crouch down, or bend down to be able to look through your viewfinder when you're setting up, it's gonna cause you some, some backache by the time you're done. Um, and then folded height is important too. So you can, again, pack it up if you need to and travel with it. Um, we talked about that. Minimum height, if you do macro photography, and I think Jen's gonna grab a, an example. I just wanna grab some <laughs> Folded length, we talked about. Um, head and mounting system, we've talked about. A uh, quick release plate is important. So any quality tripod and or tripod head um, is, is gonna have a, a quick release plate to make it easy for you to, and I guess fast for you to take the camera on and off. 
And if you ever come to the store and see that none of our tripods have quick release plates on them, that's because we're keeping them in a box somewhere <laughs> so that they don't disappear so that you actually get that quick release plate when you buy it. Yep. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, tripods also have accessories, or at least a lot of tripods have accessories, and, and they can be very useful for you, whether it's changing the type of mount or adding things like feet. all terrain feet. <laughs> or a tilt adapter or extension and macro legs. And you'd be surprised at how beneficial these can be. I mean, if you are like this all terrain feet as an example. I don't know if, if you can actually see that right now. Oh. Oh yeah, yes, <laughs> that's true. Can. <laughs> that's cool. Though. Uh, but it is really important to take a look at the accessories that tripods have available because they can make for a much easier experience when you're out shooting. Uh, center column posts, which, which can extend the maximum height beyond the reach of just the legs themselves, can be useful. And I think that's all. Let's go See, ahead. We'll stop there for any questions. I take a look at a couple that we have good stock yeah, on. Yeah. Again. What can we get? What do we have? What is actually available? Because we don't want to tell you about stuff that you can't actually buy because that's really disappointing. <laughs> um, okay, so the two that I have grabbed right now are actually from two different series. This is a twist lock, Ben Rowe. Um, This is the Ben Rowe travel tripod. Um, what is the official name? Oh yeah, you don't want to know the name. It's like a whole <laughs> series of like oh, letters and numbers. <laughs> Okay, but it's ultimately this one is available in carbon fiber and in aluminum. It is very small, very lightweight. It actually holds a decent amount of weight. Um, specifically, it will take up to 8.8 .8 pounds, which is a oh, lot. And yeah. um, the maximum height is 57.6 inches. So eye level for me, which is just <laughs> right. And then it breaks down to 20 inches. So this will easily fit inside a carry on. Mm -hmm. travel suitcase mm -hmm. um it's also really easy to throw it onto a small backpack and if it has them out here it's not adding a whole lot so this is nice because it's little um and the head i don't know if you can see actually has these really cool uh numbers on it so it has a pan function so if you are doing landscape photography and you want to be specific about the degrees that you're actually moving you can actually mark it off um on on the head itself so that's cool the other one and this is this is the one i'm most excited oh i guess i could tell you guys prices sorry <laughs> we're new at this uh this one's actually 155. you don't find carbon fiber tripods for 155 bucks yeah the aluminum version is 110 so uh it's a really good deal and this is a really phenomenal gift too we mm -hmm. tried to find as many things in boxes that were easy to wrap as we could <laughs> okay what's next um xcm this is the other series of tripods we wanted to talk about this one is available in three sizes so this is the middle size this is the 525 and it is also a 522 which is the little one and 528 which is the big one i always just kind of start in the middle it has a removable leg that is also, I think, oh God, did I just say that and it doesn't do it? No, it totally does. <laughs> um, so if you need a monopod, the leg is a monopod. You can just put your head directly onto this sucker and you're good to go. So if you just want to take the one thing out, like if you're going on a boat or something like that and you don't want to deal with a tripod, but you want to have something to study your giant lens because you're whale watching. <laughs> um, and this is the one that all of these accessories come for. And so, it comes in different colors, right? Exactly. <laughs> so all of these, everything that has a color on this is a touch point. It means that you can move it. So it's quick indicator and it comes in many colors. Um, all of the adapters for this is actually what makes it the most special, mm. I think. I mean, this is cool. It's good. It's a good price point. It's well made Pro Master products or guaranteed for a year no matter what you do to them so ultimately it's like an accidental damage warranty comes with it um but michael's holding the tilt column adapter there are the extension macro legs there are those really cool feet um which we just aren't taking everything out because we don't have time <laughs> uh, <laughs> but come on in and check them out there are also other adapters for these andrew's probably throwing stuff into the chat right now <laughs> that shows off like 
all of the different things that you can do with it because all of our different types of photography vary. And when you have a tripod that can be as versatile as the various types of photography you wanna be doing, then you don't have to keep rebuying other mm -hmm. stuff. I mean, that's kind of the goal, right? Let's buy reduce once. the stuff, yep. buy the thing that you actually need that'll do the most for mm -hmm. the money, right? Okay. Cool. Do Any tripod questions? questions before we move on? Can the same tripod be used for birds in flight, landscapes, macro, et cetera? Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, as long as you have the right accessories. So birds in flight, you're, you're going to tend to need a gimbal mount mm -hmm. uh, on your head. Uh, macro, you're going to need kind of the um, tilt adapter type thing in, in a lot of cases to get the exact right angle. So yes, a, a good tripod, especially one that allows for accessories, can be used for a number of different photography types. Uh, yes, you, def you definitely want a gimbal for birds. Like mm -hmm. bird having a gimbal makes your life so much easier when you like photographing birds. For macro, you could generally use the same. The, for macro photography, it gets a little bit funny. There are macro adapters for this specific tripod mm -hmm. that allows you to get basically flat on the ground, right? Um, that's the main thing for macro that you need is a way to get close to the subject without having the tripod interfere with that mm -hmm. situation. Um, so not every tripod can do it. Do you have focus rails for these? We have focus rails in general, but I'm not sure where they are right mm. now. <laughs> That's an uh, But right Andrew macro. might post a link to, <laughs> <laughs> to macro focus rails. Uh, and that's something that we could also talk about maybe on another session of this. We'll just go into macro uh, accessories. Any other questions? There was a bad, oh, there was a bad question. We missed a bad question. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Jeff, do you know what the bad question was? We're searching. No, else. Travel bags. Oh. Do we have a suggested bag for for travel? I can you know what? I saw me. this question as it popped up, and then uh, we were busy doing something else. And I think it was about actually taking out a plane. Do you recommend like a hard case mm. or that actually fits in the carry-on. First of all, I'm gonna say right now, if you have to check your bag, don't, don't. just don't, <laughs> don't. no, you want it as carry-on. Whatever yes. you do, do not let the baggage handlers handle your camera gear. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've seen any of the videos of what can happen, but I've watched it out the window of the plane too, mm. just have a checking. Um, so just for the safety of your gear, if obviously if you have to check it, then hard case, foam cutouts for every single thing just to you want to protect it as much as you can and that is possible yeah um yeah but, I, I would say for travel it really depends on how much gear you have to take if uh, you have to take a fair amount then one of those you know small roller bags that are uh, dedicated for camera gear is perfect um if not then almost any of the backpacks that we were showing or any of the bags that we were showing are, are perfectly fine you do want to use camera bags, though, for your camera gear, especially if you are storing it for any uh, extended period of time. The foam that's uh, in the padding in camera bags is specifically made to make sure it doesn't release uh, damaging gases. The gases that come out of you know, your sports bag or whatever, if you keep your lenses in there, you can damage them. So please use camera bags. <laughs> that, oh, actually, there is one other thing. I'm going to grab a <laughs> I'll do a bit of a dance while she's uh, out there. Uh, let's see, any other questions while Jen is grabbing? If you're packing <clears throat> stuff into anything. Oh, yeah. OK, we have a bunch of these. These these are the thing that any photographer, really almost anybody actually can use. They are padded, Velcro, super sweet. I mean, it's just it's just kind of silly. Like, Oh, I camera. keep dropping my phone. But so for for example, you could just put your phone in there and now it's perfectly padded and now I can shove it into any bag I want and feel really confident. Not that I take good care of my phone. <laughs> I'm not wrapping my phone anytime soon, <laughs> but you're definitely doing it with uh, lenses and stuff. So yep. if we're talking about travel, this gives you sort of an option to turn bags that aren't normally your camera bag into your camera bag, at least to carry your camera gear safely. Mm -hmm. Or if you're going hiking and just want to carry a camera with you or something. Exactly. 
Um, you know, we need to kind of blow through some stuff really quick. <laughs> I'm starting to look at it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. People are making some great suggestions in the chat. And I know yep. somebody earlier, I mm -hmm. think, has asked about whether or not we'll post the chat. I am recording because we want to make sure that, that, you know, we figure out what we did well and what we maybe <laughs> didn't do so great at. Um, anyway, uh, yes, we will. We will try to keep the chat because there's a ton of great info in there. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about is lighting. And uh, this clearly could take a very long time, day. but we're going to, uh, we're going to, talk about a few very specific this. things that uh, we think might be interesting to you and or anyone you're looking to buy gifts for. Um, the first one is just the lighting modifier. Uh, for those of you who use lighting in your photography, um, I, I'm sure you'd agree that the modifiers themselves are probably as important, if not more important, than the types of light you use. So one really interesting one that Jen's going to grab. Okay, I'm actually not going to grab it. I'm going to oh. show you what the box is. I'm going to show you exactly what this sucker is. This is the Raja 85, but the Raja, this whole series comes in all of these sizes. And the reason that we're pointing it out is because this does things that take the uh, pain of using a softbox away, as well as the price. So. They're incredibly well priced. They come with accessories that you usually have to buy separately. And it's psychotically easy to use. It opens like an umbrella. So if you can open an umbrella, you can set this up. You just put it right on the ground. Oh, hold on, wait. I was gonna say, do that one again. Un you know what, we'll show it how it gets undone. There it is, it's broken down. And then to put it back together. And that's it, it. and it's all velcro so all of your internal diffusion material gets velcroed in it's very fast to set up it's really sturdy i mean i'm holding it here and this thing is uh you're going to be able to take this with you if you need to go on location it attaches to the uh, the light very easily and comes standard with a bowens mount speed ring but i yep. believe you can get ellen chrome and pro photo speed rings for it if you want to swap it out and it's done. There it is. It's on. <clears throat> it's done. And the Velcro. So, in other words, if any, has anybody in this group ever had to put together a softbox? <laughs> they can be challenging and it can take you quite you, a bit of time. I was going to say, if you've done it, <laughs> you have just been like blessed. Because I remember <laughs> when I first saw it, I was like, we will never deal with another softbox ever again. <laughs> So we have a ton of these in stock right now in various shapes and sizes. So that is a great addition if you're into any kind of studio photography. Yep. Um, more fun things. Ah. Okay, <laughs> we aren't taking it out of the box. But this is one of the most fun things. That is fun. What do you want to say why it's fun? So <laughs> this is basically a lightsaber. It's a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> that you can take it's a you. programmable lightsaber yeah. um yeah it's got special effects it i believe you can control this one with an app oh. um yeah yeah it's crazy good yeah. okay yes Absolutely. oh wow okay so anyway it does a whole bunch of things you should totally yeah. check it out it is the savage rgb light painter pro led wand <laughs> um we totally have them in stock right now yeah, and it, it just it forces you to be creative as a photographer, which we uh, we sometimes don't take the time to do. So when you get toys like this, it, it can be a lot of fun. Jen and I are also wearing some toys. Oh, we are. Okay. <laughs> so these little light bands are also slap bracelets. <laughs> um, this has been one of my favorites. So you Me have too. the RGB. Yep. I have the bicolor. Um. This I use in the crook of my stinking laptop for my Zoom calls at night because I can change the color temperature. I can power it up. It has a magnet in the back of it. So if you want to be mm -hmm. using it out on location, it'll just stick to stuff. And then it's a slap bracelet. It's a slap bracelet, <laughs> which can also be attached to your bicycle or your ankle if you're out running at night Stroller. or you can give them to your friends if you're going to a rave or you just want to be able to recognize <laughs> each other in the crowd not that we're all in that many raves. crowds lately um, or <laughs> raves but <laughs> if you want to be able to find your friends or maybe your dog mm. <laughs> like 
I would put this on a leash because it just slaps on there yeah. and then stays yes. in the coil unless yeah. you undo it. And it's totally rechargeable. But I just leave it plugged into my laptop. I leave it right in the crook. And then I've got a perfect light for my face. Yep. Anyway, it's really handy. It's like 50 bucks. I think it's $49. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the it also has special effects. I didn't mention yep. that. I can do the little police light. You want to do the like police so light? So if you wanted to scare your friends. <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't do don't that. that. <laughs> um, it has a fire setting too. So if you oh, don't right. want to start a fire in your fireplace because, you know, smoke. Um, yeah, I'm showing it on my hand. The glow is lovely. You can actually set it behind really things cool. and it creates beautiful ambience. I, yep. We actually have a staffer who has, because I got everybody one as a gift, um, who uses it on the regular just to create mood lighting in her home because it makes her feel good. So, mm -hmm. you know, win for everybody. <laughs> um, uh, do you want to talk about any of the lights before? This is the only other way. We can do exactly right. Oh, yeah. So, light tables. Phenomenal gift for yourself or somebody else. If you need to review slides, do any sketching, if you simply need to light something, so it actually works. Macro photography. Uh -huh. macro photography is great. Anyway, these come in handy for a multitude of reasons. I'm not going to sit and explain them all to you, but we have them in two completely different sizes. They are thin, they are LEDs, and they work great. Um, 125 bucks for this guy, and probably um, two. -ish. I don't see a price tag on this one. This one's free. I think Adra actually already included it. Um, anyway, okay, those are done because cool. we're totally running out of time. Uh, do you want Any to questions about, about lighting, oh, yeah. actually? Spiffy gear, Lumi. Oh, packaging. Mm. We should let people see what it looks yeah. like because their staff are on. This is the RGB. The bicolor is in a yellow and blue box as opposed to a rainbow okay. cool jeff andrew any questions on the lighting before we move on oh and there are so many other lights like i wish we had time we should do one of these just about lights because lights are actually one of the coolest things and then um, in the like whole store sonia had a question on diffusers there's tons of diffusion material mm -hmm. uh the pop-up ones the five in one are, are usually my favorite they're, reflectors. they're easy to take with you in stock and now then, in stock now yes. <laughs> so yes um just for the sake of time we're going to keep moving on uh jen do you want to talk about prints and paper oh, okay and all right i'm going to talk about one item in particular and i'm just going to kind of show you what the options are this is cool these just came in it's called entrada loops you can print your own cards because what could be more cool than sending <laughs> along your own printed card with your own art with your own message um it actually comes with 25 scored cards so they are foldable five by seven cards on beautiful paper and 25 envelopes to go with it so this kind of gives you everything you need if you do your own printing these are handy the other thing that i want to show you about paper right now is we don't have a problem getting paper <laughs> i'll tell you yeah. yep. okay so paper products in this store are some of our absolute favorite we have so many journals, notebooks, um, watercolor pads, sketchbooks. The tins. Some are made with bamboo and other, uh, sorry, sustainable materials. Some are actually, like this one's cool. This is called a diary flex and you can actually switch. Oh, is this the one that you take the thing out of and can replace it? There's one that oh, has a wow. thing that you can re actually replace. So, Inside, yeah. so then you keep your smaller stack of books if you're keeping journals. The tins. I don't know if you guys got to join us for our, um, what was it called? The postcard project. Oh, we did yeah. a postcard project last year and it was so good. These are the postcards. So those are the four by sixes. They also come in five by sevens. And there are so many different types of paper Anyway, this is why we can't show you every single thing. <laughs> come into the store. You got to come in and check it out because they're going to be specific to your needs. These are cool. These are new too. Uh, watercolor pads. Anyway, for the artists in your life, if you're getting into recording stuff, um, maybe writing things down, maybe taking notes, maybe doing sketches, 
or you know somebody who is, then please come on in and check out these products because the paper itself is beautiful. The company is phenomenal. I, but Hanamule makes most of what we were just looking at. Um, and I gotta just give touts and big call outs to the companies that make our life easier, that have been really supportive and uh, that honestly just, you know, they're, they're like good people, they're good people. <laughs> no, they're not like good people, they, they are, are good people. <laughs> um, they're really people and they're not just a company, you know, looking to make a buck. Right. They actually care. So about the environment and people. So huge win. Um, you uh, here? We have a ton of frames too. Oh yeah, that's right. Thanks. We forgot to bring frames. <laughs> we have a ton of frames. So come on in and check out the frames. Always good gifts. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's quickly go over used gear. I know we're we're basically out of time, but we want to do a quick shout out. We uh, Looking Glass does has have used gear here. <laughs> uh, always a good way to save yourself money on quality gear, uh, especially when you buy it from a reputable dealer. The the one big downside with used gear is you don't know the condition, right? You're not sure exactly how it's going to perform. And that's why I always recommend if you're going to buy used gear, buy it from someone you trust and the looking glass you can trust. They're also good people. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we try so hard to be good people. So the inventory clearly will change quite a bit over time, but I can't come in the store without walking by and spending time peering in that used gear box because there's always cool stuff there. It is. And it did. We just started, we just did our first like trade-in event and we have started taking in used gear again. Um, so if you're looking to trade something in, you can always check in with us. Uh, but that is why we suddenly have more gear there. So definitely keep on top of that page on our website or just come in and check it out because oftentimes while you're looking at it on our website, somebody's buying it in the mm -hmm. store. So it's, and it's happening really fast yep. just with the, the difficulty of getting gear in general right now. Right. Um, it's also changing the pricing structure on used gear, the same way that we've been seeing with cars and with virtually everything at bicycles. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I remember, oh man, bicycles got so expensive for a while there. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> do we need to say anything else about used gear? <laughs> Come oh, perfect. No, there's a link. You can go check it out right now. Oh, nice. Um, and so actually, before we move on to just general questions and closing, I, I just wanted to do one quick shout out to kind of a random thing and I'll let Jen do one. I've got more random things. <laughs> one random thing I want to put a plug in for is these batteries, Eneloop Pro batteries uh, carried here at Looking Glass. I use these things all the time. Uh, there's a ton of different types of uh, rechargeable batteries you can get, but these Eneloop Pros, the reason I like them is they don't give off a lot of heat when they're being drawn from quickly. So if I have one of these or a set of these in a flash and I'm using it at high power and taking a lot of pictures in rapid succession like I do at wedding uh, receptions, these won't overheat my flash. So I really, really do recommend these if you're looking for rechargeable batteries. <laughs> I love it. We both have some goofy stuff. Um, I actually forgot to show you guys all the other things in boxes. So I'm going to run through those super fast. Um, for anybody who's getting into black and white film developing, this is a film processing starter kit with everything you need to get going. We love that because it's all in one box. We have a 500 watt LED studio light kit that is really inexpensive and we've got multiples of them in stock right now. So that's a great way to get going with studio lighting in a box. Um, we have, holy moly, okay, a light and sound kit. Oh, a lighting 3.0 kit. And then flip this guy. I think it's on that side. Okay, the vlogging kit. So we got in some stuff that has all everything in the box for the current ways of communicating. That's really what this comes down to is if you're vlogging, it's a state light stand with a phone holder. You can also mount a camera in it and a ring light. So it's all there in one box. Light and sound includes the little tripod for your, uh, sorry, you can probably see this better. <laughs> uh, sorry, little tripod for your phone, an LED light and a mic. And then there's the version of it that comes without the mic in case you don't need it so that you can either carry that sucker around with you or set it right up on a table just to make life a lot simpler and release your hands from holding that stinking phone and get good light on it. <laughs> Exactly. Like I'm walking around with a laptop right now instead of using <laughs> one of these kits. 
Um, I didn't talk about the roadcaster. These have been really hard to get. We have it in stock right now. So if you've got any budding podcasters in your life, this is the product to get them. It allows multiple channels. You can plug in the computer, you can plug in your phone. So in other words, you can actually have conversations with other people through this same type of medium and record it professionally. It's and it looks awesome. Cool. It does, it looks really cool. You can program sounds and colors. And so in other words, this is for the laugh track. This is for the audience clapping. We'll push that one right now. <laughs> um, oh, and then my Goofy product. We got lots of straps. That isn't the Goofy product. This is my favorite product for today. Uh, Michael and I both have a sincere love of gaffer's tape. Yep. Gaffer's tape is possibly the most handy thing that any photographer can have that all of us need yep. and that we use for all sorts of things <laughs> that have nothing to do with photography. So when it comes in colors, <laughs> then I'm just even it's more happy. To find too, right? It's way easier to find. So this is good for identifying different cables yep. or making cool patterns on your jeans <laughs> or doing stuff to your bike or whatever. Um, this is just something that I love. Yes, so me too. an easy and very good gift and one that will be used. <laughs> and it'll probably get used faster than anything else. Oh, right. Suddenly all your tape will be gone. <laughs> all right, any questions? I know we are going a bit over on you all. We did pretty good though. Yeah, it was good. only like six minutes. Six minutes over. Now we didn't actually hit everything completely but you just need to come into the store <laughs> for sure uh what is it oh our sandbags oh ashley thank you we'll get one of the little ones we're yeah. actually using them right now on lots of different things including that light where we were setting them up these are the sandbags they were made by a local family who's totally in need of any support they can get right now. So we are buying sandbags. They are making sandbags locally made, great family. They work awesome and they're totally affordable. So again, every photographer needs them yep. and they come in multiple sizes. Oh, great suggestion. That was on camera. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Anything else? Okay, so somebody found some gift ideas. Okay, cool. That is what we were hoping for. There are lots of other things. Like, I think if you asked every person on staff, um, they would each give you something different. In fact, we might have some of those coming up soon too. Yeah. Um, love to take a lighting class. Let's get one booked. <laughs> Michael teaches lighting for looking glass. He's actually an expert when I it comes do, to lighting. I love lighting. Yeah, I could talk forever on that. <laughs> okay, Linda. So if Linda, if you shoot us a message at shop at lookingglassphoto.com, then we will be sure to let you specifically know when, when we get that class back on the schedule. But yeah. as soon as we do, we also put it on the website mm -hmm. and we we email if you're on our classes list. If you've taken any yeah. classes from us, you'll hear about it. <laughs> and the, the lighting class is pretty popular. So we usually run that about twice a year at least. So it'll it should come up uh, early in 2022. And Andrew just posted a link Yay. to our classes page. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Any other questions? I don't know. Anything we can help with? I feel like I've been running for like four <laughs> hours straight. No, you, you have been. <laughs> <laughs> I just came in for the But last I really part. appreciate everybody coming along for this ride. Um, obviously, oh. A question that came up. Yes, there are gift cards. <laughs> we do. Our system stopped working for them yesterday, but we got it back working again. That was this is why I've been running for like I said four hours. It's been a lot longer than that. Years. <laughs> yes. It's been years. Uh yes, definitely gift cards. If you don't know what to get, then definitely please get a gift card. Yeah. Um and whatever you can do to shop local this year. Like obviously we want you to come into looking glass. We want to see you, we want to help you, and we want to help you make really good decisions as you're buying, the more we get to talk to you, the more we get to understand and make good recommendations from this, all of this stuff. I mean, I know we have so many things in here, many of which you've probably never seen. So I really do like suggest my challenge of finding something in the store that you do not know what it is and ask one of the team about it. Yep. Um, I like that. And I know that buying online is super simple, but the reality is, I'm sure if you're photographers, you've 
you've uh, noticed that there are very few camera st stores still around. So do as much as you can to support this one. Uh, Jen really is great. Everyone in the store is awesome. Yeah, if you have questions, someone here can answer it almost for sure. I've, I've never seen a question that uh, any of you know, my students have had that haven't been able to be answered here. Uh, it's just, it's, and it's a fun place. It's like a kid in a candy store when I walk in this place. So please support the store. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, the other thing about buying online, yeah, shipping's all messed up. So <laughs> true. I just say, you know, if you want to make sure that you actually get something, walk into a store. <laughs> Walk yeah. into a store, walk into this store <laughs> um, and buy it for sure. Cause that's how, that's how, and we'll wrap it for you too. Um, uh, everybody's, oh, thank you. Everybody's given some, some compliments Yay. right now. Thank you guys <laughs> so much. Um, like we said, we didn't know it could be a total train wreck. <laughs> I, that was the, my word. I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. Um, but I really appreciate you guys being here and giving us a chance to try um, yeah it's been fun and michael mm, <laughs> dude i just I, I feel incredibly lucky to have the community yeah. that we do the yeah, friends just, that mm, i do for sure and a lot of my friends are because of this store so it's it's true we get to know you guys and uh and we hope to see you in here really soon all right all right thanks everybody thanks for joining everybody have a great night thank you thank you